Uh, and now this week coming up, of course, we have Mood Rings, which is going to be at the Loose Tie on George Street. And I will be playing with very good friends, Remix 86. Uh, it's always good and amazing to play with people who have been around for a while because I realize I don't actually get to play with these people very often because we're often busy doing other things. So when we get together, it's a lot of fun. That's amazing. So yeah, it'll be great. I want to be talking about some dueling DJs. I want to go to an event where it's like one DJ's cutting it up and then all of a sudden the next DJ over there is doing their thing back and forth. That'd be so cool. Yes, that would be a bit of a throwback to the uh, King of George Street, if I'm uh, not ah. mistaken, the old comp uh, competitions we used to have. Yeah, they That's were good times. We should talk about that and get that on the go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's get right to the fun of tonight. What do you think? I, absolutely. I can't wait for it. I've got a bow tie on for our special guest today and everything. I'm oh, very excited. Oh, I think someone got a crush. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So that's maybe what's going on? Yeah. Well, let's talk about who she be. She yes. is one of the hosts of Oz FM's Morning Rush show, coming right back into business. She is an artist and entertainment hero who's been around for a long time doing her thing. Give it up for Stephanie O'Brien. Oh, yeah, dog, dog, Sit down. <sighs> right? So just so everybody knows, we get a chance to uh, ask the guests who come out, what, what do you want your walkout music to be? And so why <laughs> moving on up? What's going on here? Because um, I was thinking like drop it like it's hot, but I want to save that for like my funeral. So <laughs> fair, fair, fair enough, I get it. And we can think about jokes about that, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, and then I just thought of like the most fun song that I could think of that I sing all the time. And I have, ever since I was a child, watched that show, that is my go-to <laughs> fun song. I still don't know the words. <laughs> Um, something fries in the kitchen, something... Be I tag in the kitchen. That could be it. Beats. Beats? Yeah. Uh, speaking of beats, I think you know what you need to do for the walk out music going to break based on what she just said. So we'll, we'll think about that there, Slim. So Steph, listen, it's been a it's crazy year for march. you. my funeral march. What's that? It's my funeral march. No, well, <laughs> it is the death of the segment, so I guess we're halfway there, right? <laughs> so crazy year for you. Yeah, nuts. I mean, like, I don't even know where to begin, actually. Um, Oz FM, rock and doing your thing. All the amazing work you're doing with the lemonade stand. We'll talk about that in a yeah. second. And then guess what, baby? Surprise! <laughs> what up? <laughs> Marriage. Yeah. Hello. And then now back coming into that morning rush. Cheer. Yeah, well, I'm back in now uh, one, two, three days. And uh, man, I missed it. Like, I really missed it. It's hard, though. Like, being a mom and juggling and balance is not something I'm good at. <laughs> We're learning. Um, we're learning that I need to go to bed earlier mm. and I need to drink more coffee. Uh, more coffee. Yeah, hey? way okay. more. That's great. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, coming back from Germany, next thing you know, you're on the Dawn Patrol, a now morning rush. I mean, what was it like to get the call to be asked to come on to do that show? Well, like I came back and I was going, I don't have a toothbrush. Like, I'm so poor. <laughs> Like, I had to go buy a toothbrush, and then I was like, oh, I don't have a hairbrush. Well, what's more important? Like, I mean, I was that <laughs> poor, right? What's more important? Brushing my teeth. And then I was like, I should just go get a job, really. So, you know, instead of, like, going in and doing what normal people do, I went and got the email of the man who owns the company, and I wrote him. And my friend said, you know what? He's never emailing you back. I was like, yes, he will. That's my job. I'm going to get that job job and he did two days later and I had a job a week later I was on the show that's pretty amazing that eh? but that's timing that has to do with timing <coughs> like really good timing or tenacity no, so yeah. those are the two buzzwords I'd say because you're not exactly a wallflower and you're not exactly someone who waits around for stuff to come no to you. you're right right yeah this is what I know and us as fire hall brats I think right. that's in our DNA, basically. <laughs> it is. Our, uh, both of our fathers were firemen, uh, worked together for years, and so that's how Steph and I sort of got to know each other was through our parents sort of, you know, working at the fire hall. So here we are now hanging out on TV. I Imagine. know, cool. Are they proud, I wonder? Um, I don't know. They're probably not watching us. Yeah, fair enough. No, they're retired. They're like, <laughs> oh, wait, he's here. <laughs> oh, hey, what's up, Dad? Oh, hey, Dad. How you doing? Um, you played at my wedding. It's true. That was a la uh, uh. That yeah. was incredible times. That was... Um, uh... <laughs> We had the video. First of all, that wedding, um, when 30,000 people tune into your wedding on Facebook Live. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Uh, come on. It was 82,000. <laughs> oh, 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 my God. Hashtag humble brag. That's crazy. No, it's nuts. Cause, like, How did that happen? I don't know. Well, first of all, I, my, my mom's sister wasn't feeling very well. She actually passed since our wedding. I'm sorry. And I want, thank you. And I wanted to make sure that the people that couldn't come to our wedding, because I have friends from working on cruise ships. Of course for like 10 years that I haven't seen in a long time that I want them, even though they couldn't be there to be a part of my day. Mm. So I was like, you know what? Let's go live. Amy said, what? Amy Gillum was a photographer. I said, yeah, let's, let's go live. She said, that's, 
awesome. I was like, okay. And so I was like, maybe <laughs> nobody will watch, maybe everybody will watch. But it was a snowstorm that day, so yeah. it kind of worked. Yeah, no doubt. Because <laughs> everyone was like, nothing to do. Let's just tune into O'Brien's <laughs> wedding. She's going to be a dyke. <laughs> and so it all just worked out. Because now I'm Stephanie Dyke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was glad you dropped that in there as the last sentence. Oh. Um, <laughs> so are you going to have that to be your, um, is that your like Oz, you know, are you going to be O'Brien on the I'm air? I'm going to be O'Brien okay. for work. And, cool. um, and you know what's funny is of everything that's happened in the past year with having a baby and we had a really hard, I had a hard labor and it was really scary and everything that's happened over the year, the most emotional moment I saw of Drew, like the lumberjack, uh, was when he noticed on Facebook I changed my last name to Dyke. And he went, D no, no. I was like, yeah, I did it. Yeah, there it is. I want to take a moment, um, speaking of love, um, oh, you no. know, there, there's new love and then there's old school love. And so this photo that will show up on the big screen for you guys is a little throwback. No! <laughs> so guys, um, if you're looking at this now uh, on the B-roll cut that we're oh, gonna throw up 60. here. And I'll give this to you. Oh my um, God. FYI, uh, Slim Macho and Seth went um, to the grad together. And so that is hilarious, oh kismet times. Oh my God, like what was I thinking? That you're back together again. I have oh, red nails. No, I'm not <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Not you, me. That's too bad. No, I mean, Ouch. I had no. Yeah. He wore a bow tie for you and everything. I don't yeah. understand. I meant the nails are red, the lips are red, and the dress is I like, like maroon. How, actually, I kind of like how your nails match the, uh, the, the cloth oh, over the uh, thing. Oh, that's here. why you put that on that, tonight. Speaking of... Uh, I knew, I knew. I yeah, some kids. Yeah. Is that some nice. crushed velvet up in there? Is that, that is, uh, okay. that is straight up velvet, dog. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's not crushed. Feeling it. Yeah. I don't wear crushed anything. <laughs> it's straight up. It's straight up. Let's talk about the lemonade stand. Um, because that is a really meaningful uh, thing that you've been doing and bringing a lot of awareness to that. And I think it's really special. Talk about it. You know, they say music brings people together. Mm -hmm. This is a case of, well, exactly that, right? So I just moved home from Germany and I was at my friend's hot tubbing. Hot tubbing and drinking. That was what I did until I got my job. <laughs> <laughs> and brushing my teeth. Of course you and, uh, and a friend uh, or a relative of Nevaeh's had called my friend Dana and said, hey, we're doing a fundraiser, Nevaeh is sick again, she's relapsed, and we want to do a fundraiser at St. Kevin's, and we want to have bands and whatever. So I said, I'll take care of that. So I had my band put together, and then I got a couple of other bands, and we had the fundraiser, and it was blocked at the parish hall at St. Kevin's. And from that, like she got up that night on stage, she left the Janeway, she drove to the parish hall. I said, do you want to come up and sing with me? And God love her, she was so tiny then. And she got up on stage, and today she said, I want rock star over my, over my head in my bedroom and I created a monster because she hasn't stopped since and then it was like maybe a year or two after that that she called and she said I want to have a lemonade stand like the biggest in the world I said ah, I don't know if we have the biggest in the world but it'll be big and that first year was 6,000 people and not enough lemonade and my dad was at Big Goods trying to get juice because there was no lemonade left and we're like giving out juice boxes <laughs> like it Wild. was crazy and now where's that and now we're going into our fifth, I think, year this year, and, uh, you know, Nevaeh is still battling, still battling cancer. Mm -hmm. She has neuroblastoma, mm -hmm. and she's one of a few in the province that are battling this disease, and, uh, but, you know, she's always so positive, and she's such a shining light, honestly, and this is all her vision. She knew what she wanted, and we were just her people to help her facilitate and get it done, and it's, I'm going to say, 150. $40,000 in the last year. Wow, guys, we get some rounds yeah. for this. That's incredible. Like, that's amazing. And that money goes straight into the pockets of, like, we don't give it to another charity or we don't give it to a hospital. Mm -hmm. We give it right to, if you had a child that was sick, I'd give you here, you need $5,000, you take that. If you need gas, if you need to buy 10 Big Macs, whatever you need, like, you use that money. I need a Big Mac myself, but it's yeah, not for I me, mean, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I could, too. Yeah, no doubt. I'll tell you what, Steph, oh, don't be talking about it. Don't, we can Christmas talk. Christmas muffin tops? <laughs> For everyone, for you get them up and stuff. You get one. You one. Get one. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, love you to death. So great you came on the show. So glad that you are back are in the morning are you rush. Sending me away? It sucks. I wish we could have a whole Stephanie O'Brien no. intimate and interactive. See, you're already doing the musical guest piece. That's amazing. <laughs> so I'll tell you what. Uh, drop that slim. Let's see. Oh yeah. We'll be right back after this. We got an itch with them. Jacob Critch. Back in a few minutes, everybody. Thanks, Steph. You're watching Rogers TV, St. John's. Good evening, 007. <laughs> 
me what you know of James Bond. You'll like the fuse on any explosive situation. Got your attention. 007 license to kill. Is this really what you want? Living in the shadows? Always alone? I don't stop to think about it. This is Rogers TV. Hey everybody, welcome back to Out of the Fog. Really having a great time here tonight. Now you're in for a treat. His first official single off his first official EP, Obsessed. Give it up for Jacob Kroos. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment to arrive here. See, I've been feeling you ever since the first time. And I've been checking my phone, can't leave it alone, it's crazy. Out to dinner, but I'm trying to text my baby. It's what you did to me, yeah. Why I'm so obsessed with you. Every little thing you do. So baby, don't play around. Why you never stay around? Is it cause I'm obsessed with you? Is it cause I'm obsessed with, mm, back it up? Like the way you push your car down the aisle? Was that too much? One thing I can't help it if you're looking like a model. Baby, I'm fantasizing. Don't act like it's so surprising that I wanna watch you work out. Need to figure out why I'm so obsessed with you every little thing you do so baby don't play around why you never stay around is it cause i'm obsessed with you is it cause i'm obsessed with you is it cause i'm obsessed with you You said it's played again. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. This is Oren's key tag. When you use a key tag, you protect your keys. If you lose your keys, the finder can call the number on the back of the tag or drop them in any mailbox. And the Warrants will return your keys to you for free. Order your key tags today at warrants.ca. And make a difference in the lives of amputees, like me. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. This is Out of the Fog, and we just heard an amazing performance from Jacob Critch, and he's sitting right here. What's up, brother? What's up, dude? How you doing, man? Great I'm job. I'm doing okay. Yeah, thank you. So I think this is the time for all of us to learn everything there is to know about yourself when it comes to the music that you've been making and the show um, that you got coming up. We'll talk about everything you have happening. First okay. of all, how did you get into performing music? Perform music? Well, that's kind of like it came along with producing music, okay? So okay. I started with, like, just doing uh, Logic Pro in my room, you know, like doing some beats or whatever. My cousin that's a rapper, Tony Delicious, oh, he'd come man, over, yeah, exactly I'd do that. some beats for Tony Delicious, okay? <laughs> I was like, all right, I gotta start singing on these a little bit. I was like, I suck at singing, but I gotta have someone singing this, so. It doesn't sound half bad, so. That's cool. Yeah. Now, how long was that like? That was a few years ago I started, and yep. then a couple years ago I started challenge. I started doing a little CBC thing there, and, yeah. Mm. Well, just so everybody knows, which is an organization that actually encourages creative pursuits of every kind, from comedy challenge to recording an album, 
um, in the month of February, which, you know, recording an album from scratch in, in 28 days, oh, no. not easy. What was that like? Well, that was the first thing I ever recorded that was more than like one half of a song that I forgot about. Like, so it was a real pressure to get it done. Um, but it was definitely a growing experience. I always say it really helped me, put me on the right track mm -hmm. for learning how to put something together, especially in a limited amount of time. Yeah, it, it's actually crazy. Having done a couple of RPMs myself, it was like, you, how are you going to get it done? It's like the 27th, you have two songs left to do, it's oh, midnight, yeah. you have to work in the morning, like it's, it's so much pressure, but the <laughs> reward, I'm sure, paid for itself. I mean, what did you walk out of that experience with? Yeah, like a, a great a piece of work that I was like semi-proud of mm. that, you know, I could show people like, hey, look at this, and people were like, oh, I didn't even know you sang. So listening to this there, you know, it, it was impressive to people that I put something together. And it is impressive to pull that off, like, oh, for anybody. Right. No doubt about it. And it's funny because you actually were lucky enough because CBC, which partners with the RPM to do some post, uh, you know, promotion of some of the artists, and so many artists from the province can, you know, they contribute music to this, um, yeah. to this competition, internal competition, really, with yourself. And the next thing you know, you're, like, performing live on CBC Radio during rush yeah. hour playing all your music. That's right. a trip. Yeah, I didn't feel... Uh, I didn't feel qualified to be doing that, <laughs> but uh, it was a good thing. To, it was my first time singing, right. and here it is being live streamed, everybody in like a full cafe of yeah, people here. Crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so great. I was there, and I'll tell you what. Um, you know, flash forward, not even two years, and now you got an EP on the go. So right? talk about that whole experience. Yeah, man. Well, I've just been producing stuff. I've been doing the covers, um, and through I put out a couple singles. Mm -hmm. uh, one single I did, "Appreciate," that was my first thing I put out on iTunes and stuff. Cool. And that's with a rapper named. Daniel, I have uh, Nevada. He's a really out of Nevada. Cool. Nevada, yeah, Las Vegas. How'd that happen? So we did a little bit of email collaboration going on here. I met him on Instagram, so I slid into his DMs or something. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> like we got to do something here because he was making music by himself that was sounded professional. So I was like, how do you how do you do that? He was telling me about plugins and all this mm -hmm, stuff. Yeah, so right. we collaborated, put something out, and you know I kept doing that. I kept doing covers. YouTube with my buddy James McKinnon. Okay. So that was producing covers until four in the morning and filming the next day. Pretty much trying to do one a week. So all that stuff really is pressure for its tiredness. It is, man. <laughs> Sometimes the greatest stuff comes in the midnight hour. It's funny how artists create music like that. Whether you're a painter or an artist or you know any type of creator, sometimes the later it is and the more exhausted you get, the more great stuff comes. And the hours just melt away. You don't know what time it is. You look at your watch like. I got work tomorrow, it's 4 a.m. <laughs> I got like half a song done. Yeah. Dude, that's great. So listen, talk about the EP a little bit more because obviously, um, I saw it up on iTunes. That's yep. like pretty wicked to see that. How does that there feel when, you when you're going through Apple Music okay. and all of a sudden you're seeing your own album there? I'm loving that, I always like that. I mean, you throw it up, you got a nice cover art, you get, it just is different from having it in iTunes with like scratch titles and you get it up there you're like okay it's done i have can stop worrying about the vocal in the second verse that's mm -hmm. like slightly off and i'll just accept it <laughs> but itunes spotify yeah i mean it was like two months two or three months been working on it actually i did it with a grant i used that to do some production pay for some production right. uh, had a few different producers on the album cool. a couple i produced myself came together I mean, that's amazing yeah. how many songs are on it uh, five songs, okay. I think. <laughs> One of those is a bonus. A couple of those I had previously released, like Appreciate, and I got a Christmas tune on there. I threw right. up there a bonus track. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, a little, little thing, you know, I didn't want to go too crazy mm. and overdo it. Mm. Yeah. Is the future of music self-made, or do you find that it's important to have a network of people around you to help you? Because, you know, you started yourself independently. Talk about the journey of getting here and how many people have helped you on the way. Right. Well, yeah, people are super important to anybody. I mean, it takes a lot of effort from yourself mm. because you need to have that drive and only you can make yourself achieve something great like, right. especially in music but people like this Daniel the Rapper guy to taught me about mixing and that helped me a level met James started doing videos it's all about people you meet and work together collaboration is huge that's crazy yeah. talk about the importance of video in making music as an artist even in mm. our own backyard what's that all about right now music and video are so hand in hand like mm. It's hard for a song. Sometimes a song blows up because of the video. I know. Sometimes it's just a song, but a video it just takes it to that next level. It gives you the vibe that your the artist is trying to convey. It's like makes it into a package and experience. I find you know. Um, what's it like to have your own Instagram channel booming and all the people following you every day and growing, growing, growing? That oh, must be a little trip, eh? Yeah, I love the whole social media grind. No doubt, <laughs> you know? man, for sure. You get the people liking, commenting, you know. Uh, you get the notifications popping. I had to disable them. Not that it's super crazy, but I mean, Instagram, like, 
It's definitely my favorite. It's uh, way easier than Facebook. We're all hooked on the BAM. We, we're oh, all obsessed. Oh, yeah. Right? See what I did there? See what I did with the obsessed there, Slim? <laughs> I brought it all in there. Oh, yeah. I, 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 oh. I snapped a picture. Actually, I didn't know that was slick. Like, iTunes with you guys in the background, too. It's nice. It's just, oh, it's like it's that. Posted to Instagram, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it, all, is it up now? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So you see how it happens? That so was instant. slick. <laughs> I Do you think know. that's important for the future of what you're doing is to keep a connection going with all the people that are listening to you and watching you? Is that something that's important to yeah, you? Yeah, that's huge. Your audience, knowing who your audience is, uh, trying to grow your audience by actually engaging with them. That's mm -hmm. the way to do it. Like, you need, want your audience to feel like they're listening to you, they're talking to you, you know, they know what's going on in your life. I think it's really important. I think you're right. Talk about musical influences, because clearly we see, and we're going to see after um, the break, a second song uh, by Jacob. But I want to talk about influences, and who do you like to listen to? Yeah, I mean, all over my singing and my production is Usher, Craig David, uh, man, Justin Bieber, Music Soul Child. Cool. These guys that are just, I don't know, some of these guys, blow, anything that blows my mind with the R&B, with the crazy gospel chords, like, that just gets me fired up. That's amazing. <laughs> that's my inspiration, you could say. That's very cool. So yeah. I'm going to throw it to you. What, uh, when it comes to the old school tunes, that R&B, 90s, New Jack, what's up? What do you like? Uh, do like? For me, well, a lot of my influence came from house music, but for the old school uh, R&B and stuff like that, uh, the, um, let me see, uh, Blow Your Mind by... Even Gwen Stefani, actually, back in the day, is one of those things that That's still makes old. me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the Mace, the Feel So Good, is also such a really good track, too. Let me see if I can get that one really quick. Wait, what's, what's, that, what's that sound like? You ready, Mace? Party oh, place. yeah. The opening, but then I want to keep us going. We're actually going to get to the beat. Hold on now. Let's go. Yeah. What you know about Norm? I love it. That's so good. Ooh. I feel like I'm back in Normies again. Because there you go. So there should be no. But I, but I love to hear that you talk about gospel because uh, Ray Charles got in so much heat in his day when he became mm -hmm. when he got huge because he started to mix R&B, rock, oh, roll, yeah. blues with our genre that we're into in a sense, yeah. right? So even Chance the Rapper cool. is incorporating a lot of, um, oh, yeah. of that background choir aesthetic into yeah. his stuff too. Yeah. So it's a real trend going Absolutely. on. Absolutely, and it's funny because we mentioned Herbie Hancock and Jacob Collier earlier. So these cats that are in different age music and all that kind of stuff, the connection is all through that, that kind of vibe. Exactly, right? that's true. What's next for you? Where are you going? What's next for me? Uh, I think going home after this, maybe getting the bite to eat. <laughs> Let's oh. think bigger. Oh, think bigger. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, I'm just trying to put more music out. Cool. I'm going to maybe I'm looking at some schools in Toronto. You know, okay. I'm, re I'm into the audio side of it, engineering, cool. the mixing. I want to learn as much as possible about what I want to do, you know, and I want to keep performing. I want to do some small tours, you know. Cool. Do some shows, all ages shows, stuff like that. Just That's keep going. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm really thankful you came on the show. Really loved what I heard just before the break. Thank Can't you. wait to hear the next song we're going to do. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this show. We had a real laugh with Stephanie O'Brien. Let's have some rounds of applause for Steph and Jacob. And after this break, one more song from Jacob to rock us out. Why don't you take us out, Slim Macho? Let's go. All right, thanks. Here we go, buddy. Just like that. Thank you so much. It's big pimping, baby. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. You're so far from basic I'm so infatuated by those curves And all those places Maybe, just maybe I'll take them for a ride To the end of all time Every moment Every single second I'll be down for you Cause your presence is a blessing And lately I notice you smiling You can't even lie When you look in my eyes For the longest time I've been trying to make you mine I don't know what it is, babe But I gotta have you Baby, for the longest time I've been trying to make you mine I don't know what it is, babe But I gotta have you 
want to see you drop it down to the flow, but I still want to treat you like a lady. Body in the club, but I still want to cuddle when it's raining. So you're my perfect girl, best boy. Singing out a rapper melodies can explain your body's divineness. I could be a prince, you could be my highness. We could be cute, we could be timeless, we could go viral. Baby, we could find this. Scale of one to ten, how annoying do you find this? This is true love, there are noise you can find this. Scale of one to ten, you would saying on the finest. Baby, for the longest time, I've been trying to make you mine. I don't know what it is, but I gotta have you. But I gotta have her. I don't know what it is, babe, but I gotta have you. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Was that four or five? He's lost count and still thinks he can drive. Do you think he knows that when he is caught and charged with impaired driving, he'll lose his license and a lot more? If he gets in his car, he'll face costs exceeding $20,000. Does he realize he could have a criminal record for his choice to drive? And it could be much worse if he crashes. I wonder what he'll be thinking tomorrow. Visit ArrivalLive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive. Drive sober. should never have agreed to this last race. She's too old. Eddie! Coming in there! Don't so hell you're back! Get to it, Matt! Here's there's some kind of difficulty. Just one more, old girl. And you can rest. and still undefeated. The Blue Nose of You're watching Rogers TV, St. John's.